Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ryan McGee. I am the communications manager here at Welcome MD, and we are very happy to have uh, Dr. John Woodward uh, with us today to talk about reclaiming our health in the face of adversity. Obviously, there's a lot of obstacles in our way these days. He's going to tell us how to overcome those obstacles to reclaim our health, because if we can do it now, we can do it at any time. Uh, also joining us today is our membership director, Tara Greenberg. Tara, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you for all joining us this evening. We're really excited. This is going to be an amazing program. Yeah, Tara will be available uh, at the end of the program. If you have any questions about membership, Dr. Woodward will also uh, answer questions at the end. The, the best way to get your questions in, uh, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, there's a little button that says Q&A if you're watching us on Zoom. Uh, and you can use that button to submit your questions and we'll uh, ask them uh, when Dr. Woodward's done. But yeah, Dr. John Woodward uh, is kind of leading us today. He is double board certified by the American Board of Family Medicine and the American Board of Integrative and Holistic Medicine. He is fellowship trained in anti-aging and regenerative medicine and has a master's of science in exercise science and cardiac rehabilitation. He is passionate about using an integrative approach to make sure his patients are getting the individualized care they need. So Dr. Woodward, I will kick it over to you if you want to get us started. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Tara. Um, well, welcome. You know, I think this is our first, my first welcome MD uh, webinar. I've done several of these in the past um, at, as my, with my previous center, but now we've merged, so we're all one. Um, so I'm sure some of Ever Vital folks who are now welcome MD folks are joining us here today. But this was really meant to be a, there's a lot going on in the world today. There's you know, as, as I was listening to another uh, presenter recently, we've had a hurricane, we've had tornadoes, we've had an earthquake, we've had, we have COVID-19, we have, you know, a lot of new things that we've had to adapt to, or adversity, if you will, um, in the face of trying to manage our health. And I think Welcome MD, one of our, one of our missions is, is to reach in and really help you manage your health in the midst of all of this. So most of the visits I've been having in the last few weeks, uh, people are very interested in, in, in trying to recapture, reclaim their health again. We've been stuck at home, the gyms have been closed, They're, the food choices have been sometimes horrendous. I think alcohol sales are up over 200%. So, um, yeah, well, sorry, there. sorry about the beeping. I'm not sure what this all of a sudden uh, is here. So, but we'll work through it. And so, the, the idea here is how do you do it anyway? How do you do it in the face of COVID-19? What is the current situation today? Where are we at with, with this crisis that we've been in? And so I feel like I'm long overdue for a little bit of an update. So I'm gonna give you a little update on that first, and then we're gonna to get to the meat of it. And we're gonna talk about how do I get it done anyway? What does the environment look for for me to be set up for success? How do I protect myself against COVID-19? How do I improve my immune function in the event that I have the unfortunate exposure to this uh, very, very concerning virus that's causing a lot of over 4 million people infected in the United States, 850 hospitalizations, 850,000 hospitalizations that is. Um, the, the percentage of those that don't do well, of course, as we get up in our older ages and, and have comorbid diseases such as diabetes and, and lung conditions, COPD and asthma, there are some major concerns here. So what can you do sitting at home, guard yourself against, then, against this virus? And we're gonna talk about some concepts today. We're gonna talk about immunonutrition. How do I support my immune, my immune system with certain nutritive substances, whether it's a supplement or whether it's my diet? And then we'll talk about some of the lifestyle pieces as well. And I'm just gonna sum that up for you in what I call the rule of fives. And so I'll go over that in just a minute. So it'll, it'll make it simple, but it's got some teeth, but you'll remember that, the rule of fives, very simple. There's five rules, there's five things in each rule. It's very, very easy. So the big question is, who would you bet on? And I'm borrowing this, this isn't, me, this isn't my own, who would I bet on, but who would you bet on to be successful in managing their health with all the adversity that I just mentioned. 
who would you bet on? Who would have the best capacity to push through a COVID-19 pandemic and manage their health at the same time? Who are the people that are gonna be most successful? What criteria would you use to, to base that on? And think about that for a minute. And then I'm gonna tell you how Warren Buffett would choose that. What criteria he chooses on who he thinks would be successful through a COVID-19 pandemic, okay? So there's, there's some, there's some uh, similarities here that I'll get to in a second, but think about this because this is what's gonna be the answer to how you survive and do a good um, and manage your health well through this. We can still thrive in the event of all this adversity. So first of all, what is the current situation? Where, what is the current situation in the Charlotte Winston market in terms of COVID-19? The testing, let's just talk about some basic, basic items here. So number one, the testing, we have about five to 7% of all the people being tested are positive. So if you think you had it, or of those people that come into the ER to see us, it's less than 10% across the board. And that's the emergency department, let alone our clinics and other folks. So overall, that's a good sign. That's lower than it's been in months. So th there's, a, there's a trend downward overall with the amount that are positive. We have less admissions. So this is a good trend, guys. Despite being in phase two, this is a, this is a good sign. So the next thing is, the testing has improved. I don't know if some of you are worried about this lately, but the testing was out eight, nine, 10 days recently. So people have been calling and we've been trying to field those questions as to how quickly can we get tests back. That seems to shift every couple of weeks, depending on these surges of infection. And so what I'll tell you though, is most of the labs are down to 72 hours, most. And so as we look at lab tech diagnostics and bioreference labs that we have with Welcome MD, we're close to 72 hours. But here's what you should know about Welcome MD is that we're constantly looking for the next best test in the quickest test. In fact, I just spoke to some of the folks in the, in, in the, in the main office in Richmond and they're, they're hoping that when, when the reliability of these short-term tests, the one hour tests come back, we're gonna have them at Welcome MD, that's the goal. So we're gonna have the rapid turnaround tests as soon as we can get our hands on them to serve you guys better. So testing, the good news is it's a, it's a rate that's going down, not up, despite some of what you've heard. And this is just in the last couple of weeks. This comes from the head of some of the infectious disease folks out there. Um, there's a new study out of Duke about masks. And so what masks are good, which masks are not, are masks really helpful, what does that mean to us? And, some of you didn't see some of my previous webinars perhaps on masking, but the consensus is with all of the best top public epidemiologists and public health professionals are masks are good, but some of them are proving to not be so good. So let's talk about four of them right up front. Bandanas are not good. So we need to cross the bandana off the list. Knitted masks from home. Now, we're talking about the loose knit. If it's a fine fabric with multiple layers, that's different. They're talking about a very loose knit, knitted mask at home that you do yourself. We have to be careful on that. So that's one you might wanna squint at. Some people are doing a pretty good knitted mask with really good fibers that even prevent the 0.3 microns of the coronavirus from getting through that, that fibrous mask. So there are some that are being done that are okay. So you're gonna have to use some critical decision-making as to whether that mask, a mask is okay. The valve masks are decided to not be as good based on this recent Duke study. So when you're trying to decide which masks are good, the basic surgical mask is probably one of the best things you can do. And the neck gaiter, for some of you who are using the neck gaiter and pulling it up, it's, it was rated the worst, guys. So when they pull that up, they believe that those respiratory droplets are broken into finer respiratory droplets through that screen. So when that comes out at you, um, we believe that they believe the neck gaiter is not only not even recommended, but potentially harmful from its, its ability to trap them and break the particles into smaller ones in terms of the communicability and the infectious uh, uh, compound of that. So, so those four masks, just an update, if you're using those, I'm gonna recommend you shift to another mask, okay? Vaccines, 135 vaccines are being worked on around the world. There's only, there's only four in phase three, and what does phase three mean in terms of, 
uh, in terms of uh, clinical, clinical trials and studies, that means we're actually putting it to the test. It's, we're seeing if it's effective, are there bad side effects, what's gonna happen with these. They don't expect this to actually surface and to have any good meaningful data on these vaccines until early 2021. So in that first quarter of 2021, we'll have some data to at least give us an indication of where are we going with this. Believe it or not, China and Russia have approved two vaccines before phase three trials have proven them safe and effective. They actually have two vaccines already out and they're, they're administering those. So um, we're not advising you get a hold of one of these right now because we believe we need to have good, good um, science behind this. Safety and, and effectiveness is our important. So the last thing, I, this, is, this is a piece that I think is important to consider because there's, there's distancing and we know it works. We know the masks and the distancing have probably contributed to this lower infectious rate. So, so when we look at this, I just want you to think about physical distancing is what we're talking about. You don't always have to social distancing. We, we are human beings. This is an important piece to us. We should socially interact and we can do that safely, guys. We can do that safely and, and potentially keep this economy open and still engage with one another in, in a safe profile. So wearing the appropriate mask, doing the appropriate physical distancing, six feet is what's still recommended. So the World Health Organization said if you're just talking, uh, three feet is potentially okay, but six feet is what we're gonna stick with for, for just safety, air on the side of safety. So this is your quick update. And so we have a recent Duke study on masking. We have the most recent in the last week from the Charlotte market and where we're at with that. So there's your kind of up-to-date hit on what's the latest. There's a lot of good news in this. So the question then is, how do we, how do we manage our health in the face of all this? And so, um, by the way, I like classes, so I can't wait for all this to get past us and for us to, to come together in this classroom here. It's a great classroom. So we'll be able to really engage at a different level. It's always kind of weird, to, it's strange to gauge the excitement on the other end of the camera. I'm sure you're excited to, to see this um, webinar here. So let's get past the current situation and talk about who would you bet on? And who's gonna be successful managing your health at this time? I'm going to tell you that I'm gonna put a stop to there's no more gyms and I have to eat the snacks and I have to continue to binge drink through, the, through this pandemic. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean into you a little bit and ask you to come, come more your way and, and, and start to manage your health better. So there's a couple things that I wanted to, to mention is the big question becomes, there's a gap in America and there's a gap in America all the time. But there's especially a gap right now. And I'll tell you, I've seen it. I've been listening to it in the clinic. And the gap is what we recommend and what we as a clinic do. So what are we recommending and what are we actually doing with ourselves at home? So right, what do we recommend? We recommend you sweat every day. It's a great method of detoxification. It's a great way to keep yourself moving. It improves mental health status. Walk with a friend. You can distance and walk. You can do all of these things. Walk with the family members. It, you know, incorporate some physical activity at home, even if you can't go to your gym. So we're recommending all sorts of things. We're recommending fruits and vegetables, plant-based nutrition. We're recommending stress reduction techniques and stress tolerance in the face of all these things. We're recommending that you do some strength work. We're recommending that you stay engaged. So why, what's gonna take us to bridge this gap? What's it going to take? And so I want to shine a light on one important particular piece of this is there's something called the environment and we call it environmental control. And right now you have more control of your environment than ever before because we are at home, we're in phase two. We're spending more time at home. We're spending more time with the ability, the environment will determine your outcome and how, who you're gonna bet on with COVID-19 more than anything else. So 
here's two things that you need to know about environmental control. And, and, and those of you that have heard me speak about this, you're, you're probably saying, oh, Dr. Woodward, not again. Please, not the environment thing again. Um, but here's the thing. We are a product of our environment without a question. So what does your home environment look like? Are there, are there lots of plentiful snacks? Is there ice cream that I dip into every night? How is the alcohol supply in the house if that's a trigger? What I'm gonna tell you is there's a couple things to environment. So if we will be a product of either additive or subtraction environmental control, what I'm gonna to recommend to you is what do you need to do? Think about this right now. And what do you need to do to add to your home environment? What I recommend is that you have a fruit bowl on the counter overflowing. You have plenty of things in the freezer to make smoothies. You have plenty of fruits and vegetables to make these plant sterols and these polyphenols and these same products that make up things called quercetin and other things that actually inhibit COVID-19. They actually stop the replication and, and can attach to the spike protein on that virus to prevent it from attaching to the, to the lung mucosa and in in the lining of your lungs. So we know that fruits and vegetables are prominent and a big reason why we need to focus on adding more into our environment. The more you add into the environment, the more you create a stimulus that you're gonna to have to react to. And, and we call this stimulus, the stimulus response chain. So if you have a bowl of fruits and vegetables on your kitchen, you will have to respond to it because you're gonna to have to walk by it almost on a daily basis. The more you see that, the more we eat. If we had a bowl of chocolate in our lobby at Welcome MD, we'd all eat more chocolate. We have a bowl of fruit and bananas and water. And guess what? We all in this clinic eat more water and bananas and apples because it's in our environment. We, we're controlling our environment. So if it's in our environment, we eat it, period, right? The plan doesn't fail at home. It fails in the supermarket on what we bring into the home. And that's the additive piece. This is critical. I can't over, I can't under overestimate the importance of this. The next thing is subtraction. What do we need to remove from the environment that's a constant problem? I'll tell you guys that if any of you know me, I love donuts, I love pastries. If it's at home, if I know it's at home or it's in my environment, I will eat it. It's only a matter of time. So what we do know is we need to subtract and get this stuff out of the environment. We're there more often, we know where it's at, I will search and dig through, um, I will search and dig through um, the pantry looking for Halloween candy if I'm, if I'm really that uh, craving something. So if you don't control the environment, it will control you and you'll be a product of that. So the other piece to this is your gym bag or your workout shoes next to your bed. Are you set up to where you're gonna create these stimulus response chains that are going to be positive? because if it's chocolate and ice cream, you'll respond to it and you'll eat more of it. And sugar depresses the immune system. One can of Coca-Cola can decrease your neutrophil activity, which is your white blood cells, against viruses and bacteria up to 30%. So after one soda, one bolus of sugar. So remember, the, the gap is what we recommend versus what we do. The first step I'm gonna recommend is you control the environment, okay? So there's something called the rule of fives that I want you to think about. The first one is fruits and vegetables. I'm gonna put fruits and veggies. It's the first rule and I want you to eat five a day, five servings a day. It could be two fruits, three vegetables, whatever you want, but that's the first rule because these are the things that actually blo block the COVID-19 virus from getting in. And these are the things that promote health and reverse disease. So like we always say, nobody reverses disease by eating meat, but everyone reverses disease by eating plants. So clearly plant-based nutrition is not only gonna prevent COVID-19, but gonna support your health. So number two is I want everyone to consider some sort of strength activity this could be bands at home. I have a simple video on five exercises. So strength work, five exercises, okay? Very simple. Number three, I want you to at least do some structured physical activity daily. And when I'm putting these rule of fives in here, 
These are things that prevent viral replication and promote immune strength and function and immune resiliency, okay? So physical activity, just give me five minutes a day. Literally five, walk two and a half minutes out from your house, two and a half minutes back and check the box. You just did your one of the rules, okay? Four is some sort of stress reduction. Five minutes a day. This could be tapping, this could be meditation, this could be yoga, this could be prayer, this could be multiple things. So five minutes of stress reduction. And the fifth one is record what you do. Record your behaviors five minutes a day. That's it. It's no more than five minutes a day. So five rules, five things to each rule, very simple. These are the things that will not only reverse disease, if you did nothing else and said, all right, I'm turning this webinar off, I'll do the, I'll do the rule of fives. You will reduce your incidence of COVID. And if you happen to be exposed, you will be able to manage it better with a stronger immune system. So there are the rule of fives. I'll leave that up here. But I have a whole talk on the gap. And the gap is littered with so many things. So I just want you to tell you that the gap is really synonymous with your environment. So we used to think, and what used to happen maybe 10, 20 years ago was if I was at home, that's the only environment that I can control. But guess what? Not anymore. There's Grubhub, there's all of these delivery services that you can have Papa John's at your door in no time. You can have, you know, donuts. You know, you can have all sorts, you can have whatever you want delivered now at your front door. And believe me, I know you can have donuts delivered. So the environment makes it more difficult, right? It used to be I'd have to get in my car to go out and get a donut. Now I can call and have it delivered. So we need to be, we need to strengthen up our environment even more so. So we'll have a whole hour on behavioral medicine later on. But my goal for you to take away from this is what are some nutritional tips? What are the five basic tenets to, to really improve my immune function? and give you a little awareness around COVID-19. So let's talk about a few other things before we get into the psychology piece of this real quick. So let me just give you, in terms of nutrition to support your immune system, I'm just going to give you five. I actually have a list of about 12, but I'm just gonna give you five up front. And so you can get, you can look at foods laden with these nutritional items, but these are the things that they've shown in the data that prevent COVID-19, uh, COVID either replication or it slows the attachment or slows down the replication or at least increases your immune function, whether it's increasing what we call natural killer cells. Those are cells just like it sounds. They'll actually go out and kill the virus. So I wanna tell you up front, I'm gonna list zinc. Vitamin A, vitamin D, something called glutathione, and quercetin. Well, guess what quercetin comes from? It comes from plants. All of these come from plants. So plant-based nutrition, if you're hitting your rule of fives and you're hitting your five, five fruits and vegetables, you're going to get most of these in. So, and you, we, could, we could talk more about the foods where you can get these from, but this is the only one that I would say may be difficult from getting it directly from food. But what I'll tell you is things like cruciferous vegetables, broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, um, they, they develop this chemical called sulfurophane. And the sulfurophane is actually a precursor to making glutathione. So if you're eating more robust fruits and vegetables, you'll make more glutathione, or you can just take it as a supplement. So these are critical, critical pieces in immunonutrition to battle the COVID piece. So let's summarize again. So we have the environment. I know you're tired of me saying that. We've got the rule of fives, and we've got some nutrition pieces. Sorry, I haven't been writing on a, on a whiteboard like this in a while. So now let's just talk about the behavioral piece of this for one moment is what would it take 
and in terms of who you would bet on, and I'm borrowing this from a, from a uh, talk, by the way, but if you were to bet on, or Warren Buffett were to bet on who was gonna be the most successful in managing this, what criteria would he use to do that? And this might be of interest to some of you. So um, what I'll say is there was a, before I start this, there was actually a, a tool that was used on three-year-olds a long time ago called the marshmallow test. Are you guys familiar with the marshmallow test? Are you familiar with the marshmallow test? So the marshmallow test, it was, it was, a, it was a classroom full of three-year-olds and they were each given a marshmallow and they were, they were then told, I'll be back in a few minutes. If you don't eat the marshmallow, I'll give you a second marshmallow. And so when they came back in, about half the class ate the marshmallows and half of them didn't, but they were on camera. And what they observed from a three-year-old at a very young age was those that did not eat the marshmallow didn't stare at the marshmallow. They looked away from the marshmallow. They, they looked at their feet. They looked at the ceiling. They looked away. They avoided looking at the marshmallow. The ones who eventually ate the marshmallow within that time period focused on it, would not stop thinking about it. So interestingly though, this marshmallow trick actually predicted, predicted success on multiple levels. Uh, professional fulfillment, relational fulfillment, academic achievement, all of these critical areas were predicted from a three-year-old's decision at that age. They've actually did a longitudinal study and followed these kids over time. So what was it? The kid, what happened was the lesson from this marshmallow trick was they learned that they were not in charge of their environment at three years of age. And we as adults still battle with this idea that I just need to be more motivated and more disciplined and have more willpower to push through. And I'm going to tell you right now, managing your health in the face of COVID and pandemic and adversity has nothing to do with motivation, willpower, and the, the ability to stick to it. Okay. We need you to do people that are motivated and have willpower are going to do it. They don't come see us when they're motivated and they have strong willpower. They don't get personal trainers. If they have this unbelievable discipline, what we want you to do is learn how to push through it and stick to it in the face of not having any of those things because we live in a toxic environment, right? What is the three most common or what are the only three mammals on the planet? There's only three mammals on the planet that are overweight. Where do they live? In the human household, in a toxic environment. All the other mammals on the planet self-regulate their weight. But we, are, we create the toxic environment and that predicts the outcome. So when you look at this and you look at people that can, that can practice this delayed, delayed gratification, the marshmallow, when you look at people who plan and set up a supportive environment to the rule of fives, I might need to go to the, you guys might need to go to the grocery store right after this webinar. I need to go home and set up my environment for success. I need to make sure my running shoes are out in front of me. I need to make sure that I have that, that calm app out in front of me. I need to download that meditation app. You might need to find a little somehow a tool that you're going to record all this with. You might need to call the office and say, Hey, send me Woodward's strength training video of five exercises to navigate this process. So let's get to the meat of it. Let's, let's see what, um, let's see what, um, Warren Buffett, the, his top three things. And so his three things of who people would bet on, I wish this was interactive because I'd love to hear what people think. But, um, the, the first one, well, the first one was integrity. And integrity meant this. This is how he meant integrity. The integrity meant the ability to say no to all of, the, all of the distractors in his life and focus and say yes to the things that were most important. So if I, I've met a lot of people down here in the Charlotte Welcome MD Clinic and what I hear most often is they talk about their family and their friends and their career and what they plan to do on vacation and where they want to go on vacation, you can't do any of that at a high level and engage without your help. So the ability to say no to the distractors and ability to say yes to the most important things is called integrity. 
if I op if you opened up your calendar in your in your schedule book and you said, well, these things are more important to me, then we should see it planned in there. That's why this piece is here, the planning and recording stage. That shows that you're going to be you're going to show integrity about your decisions to manage your health in the face of adversity. Number two, oh my gosh, you see, number two is energy. When he looks at people to bet on, when he looks at a company to bet on or, 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 a, or a corporate professional or a finance person, he's looking for someone with that, that I'm, I'm ready to jump in with both feet and tackle this. I, my last patient of the day today was someone that I was speaking with and she just, she's a school teacher, she just couldn't, she said, I've just been bogged down, this is so stressful, it's all this distance learning. And I haven't been working out, but I know I need to. I feel better when I do. I just can't get myself to do it. So what? So my question to her was, what is your plan to do it tonight? When are you going to do it tonight? Not when are you gonna do it in the future? What? Are, where's your energy that you're gonna to find to get this done tonight? So Warren Buffett bets on people with energy with a bias to action. So we can have a lot of energy about something, but unless we're willing to create that energy to act on, the, on our health behaviors, it likely won't show up. So saying no to the wrong stuff and the distractors, saying no to the get, getting to bring things out of the environment, saying yes to the additive pieces to set up your environment for success, calling us to get the five exercises for strength at home, physical activity daily, plan it in, fruits and vegetables five a day, get it overflowing at the home, set it up for success, having a bias towards action, when are you going to do it tonight? So if those of you listening tonight have not been exercising, my challenge for you would be, what are you gonna do and when tonight? And be specific, okay? So when, where, with whom, and for how long? Very specific. The more specific, the more likely you are to succeed. If it's just a general concept, yeah, I need to work out. It's not going to show up. You need to nail it down. So, the third one is intelligence. And if some of you have heard this before, thanks for hanging with me, but I see, hopefully you can see how I'm drawing the correlation into health with these three things. Certainly Warren Buffett hasn't talked about how to manage your health in COVID, but he talks about who he bets on and, and what we're doing is we're using transference to say, these things are everything we need to manage our health. What does intelligence mean? This isn't academic, this isn't chess intelligence, this isn't business intelligence. This isn't computations. This is adaptive intelligence. This is the ability to adapt to something that I haven't been used to. Wearing a mask and not having my gym open and having to change my environment at home and having to shift. So if I'm going to use my adaptive intelligence in a, with a bias towards action and the ability to say yes to the right stuff, the stuff that's most important to me, and I practice the rule of fives and I engage these tools and I add some extra nutrition in here. Maybe it's supplemental, maybe it's just more fruits and vegetables. And I control my environment. That's, that's, a, that's a recipe for success to push you through COVID-19. And that's a recipe for success to push you through any chronic disease illness and to live better during the process. So, you know, I'll just tell you, I, I, um, I'll share, something with you. Tomorrow's my 20th anniversary. And my, my thought and my wife's thought when we're going to this, we're going to be going away for a few days, um, not too far. Uh, we've got coverage. There's a physician coming in to cover. Um, but the first thought was, I hope the gym is good. I wonder what the gym is like. First thing I looked at when I got on the website is I hope there's a fitness center. I hope there are some great places to walk. What's the weather going to be like? Can we get out and, and explore a little bit? I wonder what the restaurants are like. I hope they have a, 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 some little snack shop that has healthy options. I'm looking at the environment before I get in it so I can navigate the environment because I can have the same great time and manage my health too. doesn't mean I'm not going to have a few treats along the way, but I'm still going to apply these things because they're important to me. And if I don't apply these and I don't apply these and these, then I can't take care of myself and I can't help partner with you caring for yourself. So, I hope this was meaningful at some level to you. I know this was a little bit more um, 
more, more behavioral in a sense, but I think I'm responding to what I'm hearing in the clinic. I just can't get myself going. I'm eating more snacks. In fact, we have more snacks in the house now than we did before because we're now we're getting used to snacking. I'm hearing, yes, I'm having more drinks at night. Yes, I'm having more wine at night. Um, there's no surprise. The, you know, the, the beer and wine and alcohol sales are up dramatically in this country. Um, we could, we have, this is a decision node. We can choose to manage our health better or, 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 or continue to make it worse. And, and we are in, a, we are in a, a unique position to manage our environment better than ever before. You have more control now because you're there more often. So, okay, I'm a little fired up now. So we'll, I'll, um, what I wanna say is we're going to employ these. I'm gonna be really encouraging you to dig deep into your plans between now and ongoing. COVID's not gonna go away. The flu season will be upon us. The flu season is all year at starting in October and sometimes at the end of September. Most of it starts after Thanksgiving. So, but we just don't know. And when we compound these new illnesses on top of it, I want you to stay strong and resilient and, uh, and manage this through it. So we'll, we're gonna open it up to some questions. Uh, thanks for staying with me through this process, but hopefully that was useful and motivating and hopefully you guys are digging and making some plans. Um, hopefully uh, setting up your environment for success. So thanks for tuning in and we'll, we'll be giving you some more updates as we go through this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Woodward. And yes, we're uh, gonna open it up to questions. The easiest way to send in your questions, you see a little box that says Q&A. That's the easiest way to send those in. Uh, we do have one question already asking if uh, this recording will be available for replay and it will. We will, uh, we will have it on our YouTube channel. We will have it on uh, our social media accounts and uh, we will send you an email after uh, this is all done, probably tomorrow. That'll have the links to all of those so you can go back and rewatch this. Um, we, uh, first question is kind of about behavior and recording, uh, that you talked about with the rule of fives, what, what behavior specifically do we need to be recording? So I recommend you record all the success behaviors. So the success behaviors would be the rule of fives. The, the, the success behaviors might mean, um, so what I would say with recording it is setting a plan. So let's say tonight you pull out your little recording book. Some people use a phone. I still use a planner. Um, I still use a basic planner um, that, I re that I record on. And so I write in my planner what my, what my schedule is, work out at 4.30. These are the things spe specifically that I'm working out. And for how long and with whom and what time, usually it's by myself, but um, periodically, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll meet, meet a friend, uh, for a workout or something. So um, things like um, writing down meal planning, maybe doing some batch cooking, um, those are the things you might want to record. But up front, you might at the end of the day, check the boxes, five servings of fruits and vegetables. Can I could make five boxes into your note at the end of the day, make it simple, and make sure you can check each of the boxes. Did I actually engage in stress reduction? Maybe I need to take time to just reflect. Maybe I need to take five minutes of just what am I grateful for today? The smell of coffee, for instance, is something very simple, but you can be grateful for it, grateful for my children, grateful for um, working in a, a dynamic clinic like we are. Um, I'm grateful for a lot of things. So did I record it? And check a box next to record. Check a box next to, I did some strength work. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes to do five exercises. Check, 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 and then maybe repeat that and have that checkbox scenario for you. We can get much more detailed with that, but I think for a starting point, that would be a good starting point for you. It might be, another list on there might be, did I go to the grocery store? Am I set, is my environment set up for success? Check. Um, do I need a new pair of walking shoes? Check. Um, you know, so all, I need a pair. Uh, my, mine are getting worn out. So um, it's better to walk with good shoes than, than risk injury. So all of those things are, are good things to monitor and check. And it's a really good tool because it's also check. I'm in charge of my health. I'm in the driver's seat of my health. I did the rule of fives. I'm actually controlling this pathway. And so those are good things to check. It's a, it's positive reinforcement for you. 
All right, and if anyone has any membership questions, Tara is here to answer any of those. Uh, of, of the five on the, the rule of fives list there, which one would you say is the most difficult to get started with? The most difficult to get started, um, I'll tell you the one I struggle with is the fruits and vegetables sometimes. So I have to incorporate fruits and vegetables in a smoothie. I can put two mm -hmm. servings in one smoothie and really knock it out, but that one, can escape me till the end of the day. And then it's hard to get all five servings in at the end of the day. Um, physical activity has never been a problem for me. Um, the stress reduction piece probably for me is something I have to work on. I think each person has their own. People, when I say five servings of fruits and vegetables, guys, that's 1990s recommendations, by the way. The new recommendations are eight to 13 servings. So I'm really going easy here, but the average American is zero to one serving, okay? so. So we're, we're trying to step that up, more fiber, more phytonutrients, more polyphenols. Quercetin is a polyphenol that actually can blunt the, the viral attachment. But uh, so, yes, I, I think fruits and vegetables, because you have to really be a little more crafty in terms of how you work it in. Um, so that would be my, my biggest challenge. But to me, the physical activity, five minutes, everybody should be hitting this from now on. It's literally two and a half minutes out, two and a half minutes back check the box. And what you'll find is it, it's more than five minutes. You're, you're out walking. This feels kind of good. I'll put some music on. I'll call a friend. And now I've just walked 20 minutes. So those are, those are initiating the behavior is a key piece, but yeah. Yeah. So those are good questions. Uh, the next question is about uh, quercetin. Uh, can you recommend any specific foods that'll help uh, get that into our diet? Oh, geez. Oh, I believe the, I'm stumped here. Um, the quercetins. Um, I believe blueberries. Let me see if I jotted anything down for quercetin. You know, um, I am kind of stumped. I think you know it's it's within the plant plant protection system. So I uh, I'm gonna be stumped. I'll, we'll we'll put it. Uh, we'll 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 put a little note out there for you on that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll include it in the email that we send yeah. uh, probably right. tomorrow out to everybody. Um, next question, uh, what is your perspective on the plant-based protein sources like the Beyond Meat burgers uh, relative to healthful eating? Yeah, so, uh, you know, they're okay. Um, if, if you were to put them side by side with regular ground beef, I would say they're a better option. Um, if you were to put them side by side with a grass-fed um, meat product, I would say I, I'm a little torn because there are some things in some of these Beyond Burgers and, um, oh, what's the other burger? Not the Beyond Burger, but the, uh, what, uh, oh, I think it's at Burger King now. Yeah, it's the, it's the Burger King one. The Beyond Burger is at, uh, Carl's Jr. or Hardee's, depending on where you're living. Okay. So there are some other things in those constituents in those that aren't, you know, wonderful for you. I mean, they're, they're, they're added in for the flavor, um, but they're still okay. It's still a plant-based burger. Um, it still has some oils and other things in it that, that aren't the best, but they're, they're, it, it's made for taste. And so it's still not a bad option. And so if that's one of your ways to shift towards more plants, that's great. The goal in five servings of fruits and vegetables is not, not to get it into, in a, but not to count that Beyond Burger as a serving. So we're really focusing on whole fruits and vegetables, whole plants. And so that's the purpose of that. But I like the way you think. I think that's great. I think that's uh, already problem solving. How do I start to make that shift? How do I get more of that in? So I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, what counts as a serving for fruits and vegetables? So a medium sized fruit is a serving. So four to six ounce apple, you know, apples, 15 calories a an ounce, you know, 60, 60 calorie apple, um, a medium sized banana, uh, about the size of your fist on your plate. Obviously some people have bigger fists than others, but it's around there, it's a mound. So most of the servings in a restaurant are about half a serving. So, you know, sometimes you can only, if they give you a little little thing, you know, a little serving like this, it's not, not very uh, uh, robust in terms of uh, plant-based. So very commonly what I'll do is, is when I go to, let's say a Thai or a Chinese restaurant, I'll order half the brown rice, double my vegetables. Um, um, so 
if we have, if we go to a restaurant and I get something, I'll skip the bread and I'll, and I'll, and I'll double the green beans and add some collard greens or something like that. Skip the fries. Maybe I'll do a baked potato. Even baked potato fries that are baked are okay. Um, very phytonutrient rich. You know, baked potatoes are, are fine. Yeah. And you, you mentioned um, raw fruits and vegetables. What if you cook them down like steaming broccoli? Oh, that's fine. Any, any way you can get them in is fine. <laughs> yep. uh, someone did write in to say that uh, quercetin uh, can be found in things like onions, apples, onions. berries. Yes. Even red wine. <laughs> dill, dill has quercetin, onion has uh, onions and dill um, and red wine. Yeah. Great. Uh, someone, someone asked if we have the full list of available supplements that we have. I do have a list. Um, I, are, are the people on the webinar all our own patients? Uh, I'm not sure. I think that some are not. Okay. Okay. I, I have to be a little careful how, I, how aggressive I get with my dose recommendations, but um, because the dose may change dependent, depending on if you get infected, because I do escalate the dose. Um, mm -hmm. And so, and we have to be careful because sometimes people think more is better and it's not always better. Sometimes it can be harmful. So you should definitely, you know, question that a little bit, but I do have a list with um, recommendations for our patients. I just have to be careful. You, you know, some people see, see zinc and they start taking 100 milligrams a day and zinc can actually cause a copper, relative copper mm -hmm. deficiency. And we need copper for our bone marrow and for blood cells and, and for other things. So we have to be careful. Too much vitamin A can be a little toxic. Um, so we have to be careful with certain, certain items. Vitamin D is pretty well tolerated at higher doses, but there's no need to really take more than 10,000 units a day. Um, 5,000 is probably adequate. Um, glutathione, I, 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 quite frankly, I like about 500 milligrams a day, five to 600 milligrams a day, I think is a, is a good, good dose. And quercetin, about 400 milligrams a day. But I sometimes dramatically crank those up during illness and add about five more supplements. So um, of the people that I know were sick that we, that we used these things with, they all got better. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone will always get better, that, that supplements are, are a cure. They're not. The goal is to, and so here's the other thing, guys, um, as I'm going off on this, is this is immunonutrition. So it doesn't treat illness, but it, it, it enhances your immune system in the event that you do get exposed. So it doesn't always kill the virus, right? The, the idea is to be on guard up front. The idea is to keep inflammation very low. Well, guess what's inflammatory? Food. So there's something called the inflammasome and the food is information and inflammation. Maybe some of you have heard me say this before. So food can also be anti-inflammatory. So guess what's anti-inflammatory? Plant-based foods, whole fruits and vegetables, whether they're cooked or, or raw. Um, guess what's inflammatory? Red meat, a lot of animal meats for that matter, processed foods, refined sugars, refined carbohydrates, high fructose corn syrups, certain polyunsaturated fats. You know, there are some things that are, that make up crackers and chips and all that stuff that the retail food industry has made so tasty, which is why the environment's so toxic because they know how to get us to eat to the bottom of the bag. So you know, the, the best thing Frito-Lay ever did was, was build the two pound bag of, of Frito-Lay chips because they know Americans eat to the bottom of the bag. So they went from the one pound to the two pound bag because they know we go to the bottom. And, and they've identified four pounds per square inch of crunch on our tongue taste is most palatable. So they know the science and how to get us to eat more chips, much more so than the National Cancer Institute was ever able to get us to eat fruits and vegetables. So, um, you know, they're very seductive. They have a very high end marketing technique. Um, they have food scientists that work around the clock to get us to eat more chips and fries. You know, they're, they're good at it and they make them taste fantastic. Fat and sugar on my tongue tastes great. You know, I get it. So, uh, but I've adapted and I do enjoy broccoli and I do enjoy some of these other things. In fact, our DNA fit test is very interesting on how it tells you what you have a palate for it. It was spot on with me. So it was very interesting how the DNA can even help, uh, help us set our environment up to avoid some of those triggers maybe that our DNA fit showed us, so. 
Yeah, you talked about the anti-inflammatory foods versus inflammatory foods. There's a good documentary on Netflix called Game Changers that kind of focuses on on those two aspects. Uh, a couple questions here. Uh, one, can we achieve the needed veggies and fruits through the powder additives that we put into protein shakes? And then just wanted to clar clarify uh, kind of the, the plant-based burgers versus the grass-fed uh, and which one you, you recommend. So I... Um... So I'll go to the powders first. So um, no, the powders are not enough. Um, it's kind of like saying, if I juiced everything, would that be enough? It's not. I still go back to saying, we still need the whole plant. Uh, we still need the whole plant. We can't supplement our way to better nutrition necessarily. It can help at times if, if, we're, if we're low normal or, or we're deficient, but whole plant-based nutrition is the best. Um, you get all of the phytochemicals and polyphenols and everything. When they dehydrate it down and, and break it all down, we, we get rid of all the fiber. Fiber is just an enormous benefit to us on multiple levels. Um, plus fiber creates gastric distension, which increases satiety, um, which helps with lowering blood sugar. And it brings along with it lots of different nutrients. So to, to assume that we can extract out all the nutrients and put it in a powdered shake, it, we can't do it yet. We, the science is not there yet. However, I eat plant-based powdered shakes. I eat them several times a week. Um, I love them because they're calorie accurate and they're another reason for me to add fruits and vegetables to them. So to me, shakes are the perfect reason to add whole plants and, and vegetables to them, even the plant-based uh, nutrition. So I love, uh, and, and I use the vegetable powdered forms. I like Thorn makes a Medi Vegan Pro. It's my favorite. Um, and it does have a nice array and it even has like broccoli extracts and Brussels sprout extracts and things in it, but it's just little pieces. It's not the whole plant. So we're gonna miss out on some of that. A, a good example of this is, um, and I'm sorry, I know I'm carrying on, but beta carotene that a lot of people know about. Beta carotene is a, is a common nutrient. It's a carotenoid. Well, there's 750 or 800 carotenoids now, and yet we focus on beta carotene and vitamin A and some of these others. And so it's, you know, when you bite into that cantaloupe or you bite into some of these, you know, robust plants that are just loaded with nutrients, and then you get all those other things with fiber and better digestion and better colon health. And um, there's just so much more benefit. Um, so from that standpoint, I would say, not a replacement, but still a good idea. I still encourage it. I eat, I drink the shakes, I eat bars, um, but you've got to add the plants. To me, the shakes are just another great reason to add plants. Um, uh, so the other question was, I'm sorry. Was uh, grass-fed beef versus plant-based Beyond Burgers and, and, and yeah. those type of things, just which one, which one would you recommend more? So um, if we could minimize your animal protein, that would be best. I mean, don't start throwing stuff at me now. I know this is, we live in America and we were born and raised on meat and potatoes. And I was born and you know, I was raised in the Midwest. So we, uh, it, and it's a fast food world now. It's a retail food world. So the idea is to start making some shifts and to start, um, if I were to, to do this with your plate of food, if I was to do this and say, here's what your plate should look like. I would say this should be the fruits and vegetables, this, this entire piece. And you can put some meat over here and some other things over here. That's ideally what I would like. To start off, if you're a complete meat and potatoes guy and you eat very few plants, cut your plate down the middle and start there and fill one side with plants. And if a half a baked potatoes over here, that's fine. America is not obese because we're binging on baked potatoes. You know, that is not the case. It's loaded with nutrients. It's a wonderful vegetable and food. The problem is, is we soak it in butter and sour cream and cheese and, and then call it a, call it a, a plant. And so, so that the idea here is, is that, yeah, load the plants, maybe start off with a little salad. A little salad helps with gastric distension, throw some veggies on top of that iceberg lettuce and or spinach lettuce or arugula. By the way, arugula has more nitric oxide than beets. It's a wonderful addition to your plant-based nutrition. So, and then you can add some things over here and eventually start carving out more and more and more plants. I think what you'll find is you'll weigh less, you'll eat better, you'll have better blood sugar control, you'll have less inflammation. So what I'll tell you though, 
is that periodically I will have a, uh, a burger um, and it, it's a grass fed burger. It has three times the omega threes than the regular manufactured burger at the store. So omega three fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. So three times the amount where the other has three times the amount of omega sixes. So, um, and again, looking back at your DNA fit, how much charred foods should you be eating? That information is in your DNA fit as well. But um, from that standpoint, I'll have a burger every now and then. Um, there was a time where I'll go months without having a burger or red meat. Um, I didn't miss it. When I start to eat it again, I start to crave it again. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very flavorful, uh, uh, very f flavorful animal meat. Um, I don't, there's just not a lot of purpose in it for me. It provides, it, it promotes inflammation. It doesn't provide me with great nutrition um, at the cost of heavy, heavy fat and, and heavy other things. So um, there are other foods I really enjoy just as much. So I eat the Beyond Burger too once in a while, um, just for a different taste of flavor and texture. And because maybe I've already had red meat within the week or so. So I think minimizing and scaling back would be the, my best recommendation up front, but crowd it with plants. So if you can start to think of your meat as the garnish, that would be better. That's hard to think of. So. And uh, I can, I can tell you from experience since, since I had a kid and I, that kind of forced me to start looking at uh, looking at ingredients more. There's a, uh, there's, there's some companies that, that the food's a lot more clean because there's a lot, you know, I'm looking for clean foods these days because the kind of stuff that I'll put in my body, I'm not willing to put uh, in, in the kiddo. Uh, but yeah, there's companies out there like, uh, like uh, the Dr. Prager's products that are, that are, that are fairly clean. Um, Dr. Woodward, thank you so much for uh, taking your time to do this. Thank you, everybody who who sat through and and, and participated and sent in all these amazing questions. We really appreciate all of you, and uh, uh, thank you again. As I said, um, we will send a email out that will have the recording for this, as well as uh, any questions we weren't able to fully answer here today. Um, you can find out more information about WelcomeMD at welcomemd.com. We currently have offices in South Charlotte, Mooresville, and Richmond, Virginia. Uh, once again, thank you everybody for stopping by and we'll talk to you again real soon.